Hello, Internet! I am Danny, Joey, Nikki, Obi, and welcome to another episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, the show that, if you're watching this in the way, way distant future, and most records have been lost in some kind of horrible catastrophe, is the most popular show of all time. It was Beyonce's favorite, it healed the nation, I'm what the Bible is based on, and today's record-setting episode explores... <laughs> few movies pop out the womb fully formed. It's rare for a movie to start with a clear idea in a person's head and then have that idea translated perfectly. There are script rewrites, studio notes, reshoots, and actor demands that go into every film. The movie you end up seeing is often a hodgepodge of different ideas that have come together at different points of the movie making process, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. As a result, we get some pretty sh scenes in some pretty decent movies, and I'm gonna talk about them now. I hate doing intros to this. The people already know what the episode is about based on the title that they clicked on. Why? Do we insist on doing this? Title card! <laughs> Ghostbusters is a near-perfect movie about ghosts, busters, and Bill Murray being great. I've always wanted to do this. And... <laughs> the flowers are still standing! It's one of those amazing classic comedies that's going to be studied for years to come, and the plot is pretty straightforward. Ghosts are real, some scientists saw this coming, and built some ghost entrapment and containment devices to keep everyone safe because ghosts are bad. The relationship between man and ghost in this movie is not nuanced. Something happens when people die that makes them evil, they become ghosts, and ghosts are bad and need to be busted. Then in a fun montage about ghost busting, this happens. Busting makes you feel good indeed. That's Dan Aykroyd's Ray stance, just kind of like Napoleon, I guess, getting a blowjob from a ghost in what is maybe a dream. I have a thousand questions, and the first 900 of them are no, with a question mark at the end of them, because no, don't do that in your awesome Ghostbuster movie. This subplot involved Ray and Winston going to a fort that was allegedly haunted. In this fort, Ray finds an old officer's uniform, which he puts on, sure, and then he falls asleep. And then, a ghost sucks his dick for real, because if you're a man in a writer's room working on a movie, eventually you'll raise your hand and say, what if blank sucked my dick in this scene? It's just a thing that happens. I've been in a lot of writer's rooms. I have no doubt that while working on The Ghost in the Darkness, Val Kilmer softly pitched, what if one of the lions is suddenly friendly and like blows me 110%? And then after, I'm like, we can't, and she purrs at me. Like, but you're so good at getting your dick sucked. And I'm like, I know, but we can't. It's man's favorite idea for a thing to happen in a movie. Guarantee you that happened behind the scenes of the Ghost in the Darkness movie. This show is accessible. Anyway, all that stuff I said about the Ghostbusters going to a haunted fort was cut, but the blowjob sequence stayed, now reimagined as a dream sequence because if they cut it, the audience might leave the theater thinking, but can ghosts blow people in dreams or what? Why wasn't that addressed? And Aykroyd couldn't live with himself without resolving that issue. So the scene, for no clear reason, was kept. Ray has a dream that he's dressed as Napoleon in a fort, and a ghost blows him, and it's so great, he crosses his eyes and falls asleep in the dream. Nobody watching that movie would have known about the behind the scenes subplot, so this scene doesn't belong in this, or any movie. But Aykroyd wanted to keep it in, saying, quote, the ghost in the fort, the seduction ghost. In paranormal research, that's a common thing. Ghosts doing sexual things to people. I have a friend who had three women visit him in a haunted house in Louisiana, and it was one of the greatest nights of his life. But in under two hours, you obviously can't have everything. End quote. Yeah, obviously you can't have everything. Dan Aykroyd believes ghosts are real, and that a few of them f the shit out of his buddy, a liar. And if his Ghostbuster movie were a little bit longer, he could have included all of this information. That's the amazing, sort of adorable part of all of this. Aykroyd wanted to include a scene involving ghosts seducing people in haunted houses because he believes there's historical precedent to that kind of thing. But when told that there wasn't enough room in his movie for a clear subplot explaining this, he compromised with, ugh, fine. But we're keeping the blowjob scene. No context. The people will understand. As a representative of the people, we do not. Kingsman horny butt sex princess. Did my title card operator have a stroke or is someone making entry titles based on a random drawing of five cards against humanity white cards? Do we want to maybe try that again? All right, fine. 
I know when I'm beat. Kingsman The Secret Service is a fun, gratuitously violent, action-packed movie based on a comic book. It's one of those enough said movies. A uh, movie that is kind of cool, but when people try to sell you on it, they resort to just excitedly listing the bizarre, ridiculous, and outside-of-the-box elements contained therein. So, if you ask someone why you should watch Kingsman, they'd say, There's a lady with swords for legs! The president's head explodes! Samuel L. Jackson plays a tech billionaire villain with a lisp for no reason. Seriously, it's fine. And Colin Firth does a beautifully choreographed murder dance through a church. Nuff said. I generally hate enough said movies, but the charm, acting, and story of Kingsman really worked for me. It's a fun, dumb movie with cool characters and, briefly, Mark Hamill. Am I meant to find that reassuring? Enough said. All of it is pretty good. And then there's this scene. Aren't you that princess that went missing? You can't get me out. Well, if I do, will you give me a kiss? I've always wanted to kiss a princess. If you get me out right now, I'll give you more than just a kiss. If you haven't seen the movie, that guy in the glasses is our hero, a kind-hearted British street punk who is recruited for an even more secret version of the Secret Service. The woman in prison is a princess who was captured because she didn't go along with Samuel L. Jackson's evil plan of blowing up the stupid and poor people of the world in an effort to reduce the population and address climate change. It's a weird movie. He is a sweet boy trying to help and do the right thing. She is a princess who chiefly has been notable for being one of the few people in power willing to stand up to Sam Jackson, which is why she's in prison. This is the first time they've met, and he would rescue her, but he has to go save the world first. And he tells her. Sorry, love. Go to save the world. If you save the world, we can do it in the asshole. I'll be right back. Everything about this is weird, but weirder still is that our guy saves the world, and then she immediately makes good on her promise. You owe me XZ. XZ. She is a legitimate princess who has been missing for quite some time and has an entire country to preside over. She's got family that's missing her. She's got a, a country that is probably freaking out. And even if she weren't royalty, she's a kidnapped person who has been held captive by a maniac and his sword-legged bodyguard. That is not a situation that immediately lends itself to horniness. You need to get home, see your family, see a doctor. And you, Eggsy, our hero boy, you just killed a bunch of people, indirectly including the last cool president of the United States. You also shouldn't be thinking about anal sex right now. It's a weird, bonkers, non-tonal fit for this movie. Also, and I hate, hate, hate using my this stupid ass show to make any kind of point, but we shouldn't be perpetuating the idea of sex as a reward. The movie takes the sex as reward idea to its most extreme point. If you save the world, an undeniable good deed, you will get anal sex with a princess, an undeniable rare sexual event for at least two reasons. The height of the circumstances, the ridiculousness of it, makes it easy for us to brush it off. You save the world from a McDonald's loving Samuel L. Jackson, of course, you should get to have anal sex with a beautiful princess. This movie's wacky. But if you consider the sentiment behind it, it can only be insidious. World saving and princess butt sex is the extreme end of the spectrum, but if you zoom in on it, it becomes guided something heroic and gets repaid with sex. And zoom in even further, and it becomes guys who do good things are owed a sex treat, and that is exactly the kind of toxic lesson that we can't still be teaching in whatever year this is. It's not enough that he should save the world because it saves the world. It's not enough that he should save the world because it's the right thing to do. He needs to also get special birthday sex from a princess? We shouldn't be conflating sex with reward slash payment in movies in general, but we also don't need it in Kingsman, a movie where we didn't need any additional motivation to have our humble, poor British punk taking down an insane rich technocrat. Ugh! I hate how self-important we got. Do we have any dumb entries I can look to? That feels pretty unimportant. Let's get into it. Adam Sandler, who can do whatever he wants, remade a prison football movie, The Longest Yard, and it was mostly stupid. It's about some prisoners playing football against their prison guards and is a pretty fine but forgettable movie. Sandler partners with old hat Burt Reynolds and cool insider Chris Rock while organizing their football games. And then, Chris Rock brutally burns alive. What? What? How's he listen to that crack of shit? This has no impact on anything. It's just a weird, gross scene in a movie that otherwise was about a bunch of people playing football together. It's not a serious movie. It's not about the justice system. It never positions itself as an important movie. And yet, suddenly, let's watch Chris Rock burn alive for no reason. That's dark. I know I spent a bunch of time on the first two entries, and this feels kind of short-changed, but like, 
dude burned alive, right? It's a forgettable Adam Sandler movie and there was a brutal fire death scene. That didn't happen in Mr. Deeds, or Big Daddy, or Wedding Singer, probably. It was just like, let's burn this guy in this one movie. It's f***ed up. Anyway, join us next time when our topic will be Daniel Leaves writing the final tag joke for the last possible minute and this time didn't feel like working on it because it doesn't actually matter. It actually hurts our channel if we stick around reading meaningless content because the audience is more discerning and selective about their time. Okay, sounds good. Sounds like a meaty episode. Can't wait to sink my teeth. Bye. Hey everybody, uh, thank you for watching that. Make sure you click the big C to subscribe uh, and click one of the videos to my right to watch other funny videos. Make sure you click on that dumb YouTube bell so you get notifications when we put out new videos. And if you're still looking for something to do, Call your parents, tell them you love them. And call mine too, uh, I forgot to.